Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex, back with my monthly series on the best board games coming to retail this month, November 2021. Also, I want to note that these are games that are coming to retail in the North American market. Why? Because I live in North America and I'm a selfish person, okay? I want to know the games that I can get easily and the games I can get now. So that's why I'm covering North America. Some of these games came out last month in Europe at, uh, you know, Essen, things like that, but they're just getting to North America now. So maybe you were watching Essen previews and being like, oh, I want that so bad. Well, now you can get it. Also, I try to do a pretty good job on this list of including different types of games, right? I, I want games that hardcore gamers can enjoy and games that families can enjoy. So there's a bunch of mix of different types of games. So with that said, let's get into it. Ooh, the anticipation is killing us all. Best board games coming to retail, November 2021. Hey. Bezier Games is releasing Ultimate Werewolf Extreme. There's a lot of games in the Ultimate Werewolf series, and they're some of the best party games for large groups of people. You know, there's not a lot of games that play like 15, 20 people. So if you're having a game night with a ton of different people and you need a game, check out the Ultimate Werewolf series. Now, Ultimate Werewolf Extreme, one of the cool things that it does differently, you know, there are certain things like there's new roles added and things like that, but the main difference is Ultimate Werewolf Extreme comes with a free moderator assisted app. So it's an app that can help keep your games on track. And even cooler than that, it's an app that can help you set the decks before you start playing and gives you tips on which type of roles to pick for the game. So you're like, okay, well, I want an easy game. Here, these pick these roles. Ooh, I want like a tough game, a com complex game. Then pick these roles. So I like that it kind of helps you build the deck and and makes each game different and helps you along the way for that. So that's Ultimate Werewolf Extreme. Big G Creative is releasing Hangry, and this is a game focused uh, on kids, for sure, families with kids. It is a fast-paced food flipping game where you gotta flip your food card and then look for a match and then slap the cards before other Hangry players try to poach your favorite food. And it looks like silly and fun and great for kids. But one of the most notable things about it is it is coming to retail at Walgreens. And I have not heard of board games being in Walgreens before. So that's kind of exciting, right? Our hobby is expanding. Yeah, there's games everywhere. Bed Bath & Beyond have, have games now? Definitely fits into the Beyond section, you know, that's neither bed nor bath. Please don't play your games in the bath. That's not the right place for board games. But, you know, Walgreens is getting into the game business, so good job Big G Creative getting a game in Walgreens. Big Potato Games is releasing two games to retail this month, the first of which is called What Next? And What Next is a pick-your-own-path adventure exploration game. So you remember like those games you played when you were kids, the, the books that you read, the pick-your-own-adventure books, where you were like, flip to this page, and then flip to this page, and inevitably you just went back and read the whole thing because you wanted to know what happened in every avenue. Well, what next is kind of like that. It is a, it's a cooperative game where you get to pick different paths and unfold an adventure along different paths. And the game comes with different boxes, different envelopes, where you are gonna be releasing information and opening new components as the game goes on. Uh, so if, if you like that idea of cooperative and, and, uh, and choose your own adventure, then definitely check out What Next from Big Potato Games. Big Potato Games is also releasing Nice Buns, that is Nice Buns, the, the board game, not to be confused with Nice Buns, the cat call. Don't do that. Cat call's not good. Nobody likes it. Makes you look dumb. Don't cat call people. But maybe play the game Nice Buns, huh? Then you could say it to each other in that scenario. Hey, Nice Buns. Why, thank you. I do like this game, too. 
Also, I've been working out. Thank you for noticing. Nice Buns is a light strategy game uh, in which players sit together uh, and race to fill up their plate with three different sets of colorful bow buns. So this is definitely a family weight game as well. This is a game you're going to play if you have kids uh, and that sort of thing. So if you're looking for a quick, you know, 20 to 30 minute family game, the components in this look really cool. You know, I love the colors and all that stuff. So check out Nice Buns. Uh, Devere Games is releasing Luna Capital, and this is a game that got a ton of hype at Gen Con this year. It's one I missed, and then when I watched coverage of Gen Con afterwards, people were like, oh, this game is tight. I love this game. Uh, it is a mix of card drafting and tile placement, and I haven't seen that mix in a lot of games before. Independently, I love both of those mechanics. They're, they're really cool mechanisms for games, so I'm interested to see how you mix card drafting and tile placement, but in the game, you're trying to build the best settlement on the moon, you know, because the moon landing was not fake. We went there, people. I'm sorry, all you conspiracy theorists. Okay, I'm coming at you in my retail video telling you wrong. We went to the moon, and this game is about building best settlements on the moon. You want to become the capital city of the moon. So this is definitely like a, you know, a more strategic, more Euro-y style game where you're building up your settlement. But it's also not super complex. Like this is a game that looks like you can play with casual gamers as well. Gale Force 9 is releasing two different Dune board games. Hey, did you see the Dune movie? It's out now. Well, do you want to play a Dune game? There are two. There's a lot of Dune games out there, right? There's the classic one that we have Dune Imperium. Then last month, uh, you know, Portal Games released a Dune game. Uh, and this month, Gale Force 9 is like, guys, we want to be part of the party. Okay, don't leave us out of the party. My favorite thing about the uh, Dune movie is that, like, you know, it builds this whole different world and it really does a good job of world building, but then everybody's name is just like Paul, Doug, hey, Bob, hey, do you, are you going to be the savior and the leader of House Arrakis, Cle Cleveland? Is that Cle Cleveland? Do you want to lead our house? You know, do, why do why do we have just such basic names? But Gale Force Nine, two board games coming out in the Dune world, and one of the interesting things, one of the board games really, you know, complex and meaty. The other one, more of a social deduction game. So the two games we have are Dune, a game of conquest and loyalty. This is a game that re-implements the sort of classic Dune board game from 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, but this game, one of the notable things, uh, the re-implementation, re it does it shorter and faster. So you're talking about a hour-long game play here rather than an all-day game play situation. So you, you can play a strategic Dune game in about an hour here. Uh, and it also sort of removes some of the diplomacy elements from the original Dune board game. So I, I believe there's still diplomacy in this game, but it's not the like, hey, you got to go into a different room and form alliances and we're waiting on you for 20 minutes because you can't agree. And then you just get to the table and someone betrays you anyways. OK, we don't none of that. There's still diplomacy, but not that sort of get up and leave the room type of diplomacy that makes the game last for, you know, 16 hours. This game you can play in an hour. Uh, the other Dune game uh, is Dune Betrayal. And this is a social deduction game set in the Dune universe. So you get to play as one of the iconic characters in the Dune movie, the Dune books, uh, and each, each of those characters represents a distinct role, and there's vying factions, and you're trying to control the Sands of Dune. So if you want like a more, you know, almost like a more party game 
style of a Dune game. Well, this is a social deduction game that can play four to eight players. So you want to get a bunch of people involved in the Dune world, this is a pretty good way to do it. Hobbity EU is releasing 303 Squadron to retail in North America this month. This is a highly anticipated game that uh, was on uh, you know Kickstarter a long time ago. And it is finally coming out, so you can be excited that uh, that this is that this game is finally here. Uh, this is a, a a game with awesome, awesome airplane miniatures. Okay, I, I haven't seen a lot of games with cool airplane minis. We got plenty of car minis out there. Gimme the skies, baby. Uh, and so, three hundred three squadron, you get to relive the exploits of the fabled. RAF Squadron, and this is a cooperative game or a single-player solo game. Uh, but it is a it's a war game that excites me. I don't know. I don't get like that excited by a lot of war games. You know, it's just kind of like, all right, we're just you know, here's some tanks in World War II. You know, I've seen it before. But this, you're doing whole airplane battle and and doing a famous battle, the Battle of Britain. From, uh, is that World War II or World War I? The Battle of Britain? Oh boy, I should have looked that up before I did this video. Because now I look like a real dummy. But, you're reliving a battle with airplanes. And that sounds cool to me. So check that out. It, that one came out last month in Europe, but is getting to North America now. Lucky Duck Games is releasing Chronicles of Crime 2400. Ooh, future detectives. Also, disappointing that we haven't stopped crime by 2400, huh? There's still, there's still murder in the future. We haven't, we didn't, we didn't figure it out. Well, all right, human beings haven't evolved much. Good to know. Uh, if you don't know uh, about Chronicles of Crime, it is a game series with multiple versions set in different time periods. Uh, there is a present day version, a 1900s steampunky version, a 1400s medieval version. This is the future version. So if you want to be Tom Cruise in Minority Report, you get a chance. Chronicles of Crime 2400. Um, one of the things that this does differently, um, like all the other games, it's a, uh, it's a detective game that is controlled by an app and you have QR codes on all the different cards and you can talk to different suspects and get different clues and things like that. One of the interesting things that this adds that's different other than the setting, you can upgrade your characters. You can get cards and add them to your own character and now you have different abilities and different devices at your disposal that will allow you to do different cool things. Like one thing you can do that I saw is you can do a hologram so while you're talking to somebody else you can project a hologram so they think they're talking to not you. Ooh, you can trick them. You can trick people in this game and I like that. So check it out. Chronicles of Crime 2400. Pandasaurus is releasing That Time You Killed Me uh, and this is a real nice success story. You all probably know the global industry has been insane this entire year and everything and everything is delayed not just board games everything has been delayed this year shipping wise well that time you killed me I actually picked as my co best game coming out in 2022 at Gen Con that I saw because Pandasaurus didn't think that it was gonna come out till 2022 and in a stroke of good luck it actually arrived early their shipment arrived early. The only time this entire year that a shipment of board games came early. So now you can get this game right now instead of 2022. It is releasing in November, that time you killed me. I love the look of this game. I got a chance to preview it at Gen Con and it is super cool. If you like chess or if you like abstract strategy games, then this game is gonna be great for you. You play on three different boards, and those boards represent the past, the present, and the future. So you can do something in the past that changes in the present and even more in the future. And I love that idea of playing on three different boards, and the things you do on one board affect the things that happen on other boards. 
It is a two-player only game, so you are fighting one other player across time. And that I love the theme of that. And I think one of the things they did really well with this game is if all of the content was available right from the beginning, it would be overwhelming. But you get to basically release boxes of content as you play the game. So it becomes like a little bit of a campaign game in an abstract strategy game form where you can play a game and then you figure that game out. Well, now you open a box. Now there's new content and new things you can do across different time periods. So that's pretty cool. Pandasaurus Games is also releasing Machi Koro 2 at the end of the, uh, of the month. And this is... What I've heard people say is like this is like a 1.5 version of Machi Koro. It's not quite a full, you know sequel, but it does do some things differently. Many of you probably know Machi Koro, one of the best dice rolling games out there. Uh, it's a fairly classic game at this time, at this point, that a lot of people know. Um, so the same things apply here. You're rolling dice and you are trying to complete uh, different cards. There is a take that element to the game, so be, be aware of that. And this game really just streamlines the original Machi Koro. And one of the things that looks cool is it adds more interesting landmarks. So you're trying to complete landmarks and this game comes with a bunch of different landmarks that give you interesting special abilities as you complete them. And that seems pretty cool to me. So if you love dice rolling, then check out Machi Koro 2. Stonemeyer Games is releasing Rolling Realms this month. Um, this is uh, maybe the first game of its kind. This is a roll and write game, but every board, every every board that you play on represents a different game from Stonemeyer games. So Stonemeyer is famous for having games like uh, Wingspan, Scythe, Viticulture, a lot of great games. They have a really great library of games. And this is a roll and, roll and write featuring those other games. So the realms are the realms of their other games. So, you know, it's one of those games like, if you're a big fan of Stonemeyer, then definitely check this out. If you've never played any Stonemeyer games, I, I don't know. I don't know how this one is going to play for those types of people. I mean, it's a pretty insidery game, you know? If if you if you've never played Scythe and and now I got to do Scythe things on the Scythe board, I'm like, well, I don't what why does this matter? But if you've loved Scythe, you're like, "Ooh, haha, this is like a cool different way to play it." So, it's a it's a dice rolling game, like I said, it's a it's a roll and write, uh and then based on your dice rolls, you could use them uh, on their realm cards to generate resources and earn stars. So if you're a big fan of Stonemeyer, definitely check this out. If you have never heard of Stonemeyer, well, maybe it's not the game for you. You know? The Op is releasing three games to retail this month that look cool to me. Uh, one of them is Cuphead, the fast rolling dice game. A lot of dice games this month. I'm just realizing right now. A lot of dice games. Cuphead has some of the coolest retro art ever. You know, if you want to feel like you're playing a game from the 1920s, you know, where you couldn't drink booze unless it was out of bowling balls, then play Cuphead, all right? Because it's got that cool old, like, you know, early Disney type uh, of artwork. Uh, and in uh, it's this is a real-time dice rolling game. So you're rolling dice and then assigning them to your board as a timer uh, counts down and you are assigning dice in order to fight and damage and ultimately kill different bosses. And there are multiple bosses in the game so that sounds cool, right? You can start easy and get harder but you guys are, it is a cooperative game where you're all rolling dice and trying to assign them to different spots on your board in order to do damage to a boss. Uh, it's definitely a game that can be played with families as well. So uh, if you're if you're looking for you know maybe like a ten year old and up sort of thing, you're probably not going to be playing it with little little kids. But you know if you've got ten year olds and you're looking for games that you can play with them, 
It looks very exciting. It is a real-time game, so if you don't like real-time games, because they can be stressful, oh, anxiety, yeah, you know, it's definitely anxiety-inducing, but looks pretty fun to me. The op is also releasing Goonies Coded Chronicles, so the full name of this game is The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, a Coded Chronicles game, and I guarantee you will never, ever say that title in its entirety ever the whole time you own this game it's too it's too much so it's the goonies coded chronicles game this is an escape room style game so you are playing as characters from the goonies to try to solve puzzles and figure out a mystery and and, and escape one of the cool things you know there's a lot of different escape room type of games the exit series the unlock series but one of the things about this is each character in the game has special abilities. And so you are going to use different characters to solve different puzzles, right? You're going to want to work together and have different people do different things based on their special abilities. And I haven't played a an escape room style game that does that before where each character has their own special ability. So that sounds pretty cool with me. Um, you can also play this with an unlimited amount of players. So this is a game you can play with a ton of different people if you're looking for games with uh, that work for big, big groups. The op is also releasing Disney's Kingdom Hearts Perilous Pursuit, which re-implements uh, their previous game, Fantastic Beasts Perilous Pursuit. So this involves a bunch of Disney characters, uh, and uh, uh, you get to play as Goofy, Donald, and other different sort of classic Disney characters. And you are, um, this is also based on a video game, Perilous Pursuit, which I have not played before. Um, but this is also another dice game. Ooh, you got a lot of opportunities for dice games this month. Where you are, uh, you're rolling, you're rolling dice, collecting sets of dice, and working together in a cooperative game uh, to, uh, to you know, you're you're working together to protect each other, attack heartless, collect potions, and seal the door to save six worlds without letting the darkness take over. Nobody likes the dark. That's why night lights exist. All right. Thunderworks Games is also releasing three games to retail this month, and all three of these are fairly highly anticipated, I would say. The first of them is Cape May, which is a little bit, you know, of a departure for what Thunderworks is normally doing these days. A lot of Thunderworks games right now are sort of in the um, role-player universe of, uh, it's a fantasy universe, but Cape May is a euro style game where you are building wealth and prestige by developing the seaside city of Cape May, New Jersey. This is, you know, not the Jersey Shore. This is not the Jersey Shore. You ain't, you ain't working on getting spray tans and having casual sex, okay? This is a euro style game where you are building up a town, you know, so... Maybe this sort of scratches that Monopoly itch for you. You want a different, you know, uh, area where you can buy property and build up your buildings? Well, this is this is a, a better game than Monopoly where you can, you know, build cottages, develop them into Victorian homes, upgrade them into historic landmarks, and build a really cute town that makes you a lot of money. Come on, you still gotta make money. Thunderworks is also releasing Cartographer's Heroes. Uh, this is a, uh, a sequel to their game Cart Cartographers that came out a few years ago. And uh, Cartographers is one of my favorite games of the last, like, three years. It's super great. You are drawing maps, uh, different sort of tetris style land shapes, and you're trying to maximize your points by tetris shaping, you know, tetris different land um, types together and, and getting points for different stuff like that. Well, Cartographers Heroes uh, does the same thing. You are cartographers. You are, it's a, it's a, you know, flip and write game where you are flipping cards, seeing a Tetris land tape, you know, type, and then drawing that onto your map. But one of the coolest things, this, this has, you know, this game has 
new maps, uh, it has uh, new scoring cards, new exploration cards, but one of the things that I think looks really cool about this game that it does differently than the original cartographers is it includes ambush cards that have unique abilities on them. So there's like a cool way to get some special abilities in this game that'll let you do cool, you know, things throughout the game. And so that sounds pretty fun for me. So you can draw maps just like the originals, but also maybe you got special abilities that help you draw even better maps. And then, you know, finally, Thunderworks is also releasing role player adventures. So they had a game, I don't know, five years ago, role player, where you got to roll dice, draft dice, and build a character. And it's a very fun game. I really like it. But, you know, you don't actually get to go on an adventure. You're just building, you're building your elf, you know? And then at the end of the game, you've built this cool elf and then you don't get to do anything with it. So role player adventures is the adventure that you can take that character on. It comes with prefabricated characters. So if you've never played role player, you don't need it. You can just play role player adventure with a character that they've already built for you. But you can also play role player and then bring the character you built into role player adventures. Role player adventures is a big epic exploration game. There are maps that you're exploring. There's a bunch of different things you could do. Uh, it's a campaign style game and it looks really, really fun and really cool. Um, so that's Thunderworks, really bringing it this month. Really bringing it with three great games this month. Um, I also want to take a minute uh, to note two games that I said were coming out in past months that didn't come out uh, because of the global shipping woes. Uh, so maybe you were like, man, I wanted to get that game, and he said it, and it didn't come out, and he was wrong, and I'm never watching him again. Well, I'm acknowledging right now that Sometimes, even though we have the, the best plans to release these games, uh, some stuff changes. So Lizard Wizard, which I thought was coming out in September, is actually b being released this month. And then Picture Perfect, which I thought was coming out uh, last month in October, is actually coming out now. So uh, check those games out. If you couldn't find those before, well, they are actually coming out this month in November. So that's what I got for you. Those are the best games coming to retail, November 2021. You know, maybe don't buy all of them. That's probably too much money for you. But hopefully you can buy a couple and get them to the table soon and play some good games. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Have fun out there playing games.